Welcome back to our coronavirus town hall. Thank you for staying with us. Now we are joined tonight by Indiana's congressional delegation. You see them there and we continue our conversation right now with representatives from northern Indiana. Congresswoman Jackie Walorski and Congressman Jim Banks and Jim Baird. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We appreciate you being part of this conversation. You know, we want to start out first in Cass County, which ranks third for the most COVID cases in our state. Tuesday, local officials declared an emergency after the Tyson Foods processing plant in Logansport shut down. Now, hundreds of employees tested positive for COVID-19, and at one point, the local health department said they made up 75% of the county's cases. So, Congressman Baird, how responsible is Tyson Foods for this spread in your community, and what should happen next? Well, interestingly enough, I've been working in, uh, with uh, that community and you should be very proud of the county commissioners, the county health department. And I had the opportunity to stop by after a, a greeting with the vice president uh, at the plant and listen to the plans they have for trying to partially open the plant. So they're very concerned about the health of their employees. Uh, the other side of the coin is from an agricultural standpoint, the livestock producers that are, have those 300 pound hogs that are ready to go to slaughter or go to harvest uh, need to have that access to that plant. So uh, I am very pleased to see that uh, the county commissioners there in Cass County uh, have designed a plan to be able to partially reopen the plant and their local health department. And I've sat in that meeting with that group uh, as they formulated those plans. and. Uh, I think the local community should be reassured about uh, the efforts they're making to make it a safe environment. And this is not only true across in Cass County, but the hog slaughter and our swine producers across the nation are facing a similar kind of problem. So the quicker we can get through it uh, and get through this uh, process, the better. And Congressman, I know you just spoke specifically to what your county is doing, but to hold your feet to the fire there. So does Tyson hold any responsibility, yes or no? Yes. Okay, thank you. I was just at that, that meeting I was at was in Cass County, and that was with the local commissioners and the local health department and Tyson representatives, and they, they were working well together to protect the employees. And let's stick on this topic just a bit longer here. So we know experts warn that these plants, they may need to stay open to avoid a meat supply shortage. But our viewer, Ann, wants to know, why is the federal government only offering suggested safety measures instead of mandatory safety measures for these meat processing plants? Congresswoman, let's start with you on this one. Well, it's a, it's a great question. And first of all, thanks. Uh, it's great to be with all of you today. Thanks for doing this. It's great to be with my colleagues. These are the types of questions that I hope we can get back to Washington and solve quickly when we get Congress uh, back to work. And that's why conversations like this are important. It's important, though, that, as Congressman Baird said, that we rely on the leadership at the local level. We need our local health, health uh, officials, our state health officials, and our federal health officials to work together to, to define what the new normal and the new social norms, the new precautions that we need to take as a society, as workers working in uh, in facilities all over the state of Indiana and all over the country need to take. That that's, uh, that's what I'm looking for from our local health officials who are the experts on the ground to educate us on what those new social norms need to be so that we can get Indiana back to work. And that, that's what I'm focused on today is being an advocate for exactly that. It's time to get Indiana back to work, but we need to do it with, with uh, new precautions, new social norms and we need our local health, health officials to work with the state and federal level to tell us what those will be. And Congressman Banks, since we heard from you first, let's now see if we could hear from Congresswoman Wolorski. Yeah, I agree. You know, I can't say enough about what's happening at the local level and the state level. You know, I've had um, such a great opportunity to work and to advocate for, in my district for innumerable amounts of things with our task forces from the time I stepped back at home and flew back from D.C. here. You know, we've been at this thing together whether it's advocating for PPE or it's looking to solve problems. You know, I have pork producers down there in that area of what you were just talking about with Tyson. And I can tell you that it, it, people in our states should be show, so proud 
of our local and state officials and how they've worked together. There has not been an issue that they've backed off from. Tough issues. We've all gotten into the mix on this to make sure that we are helping with that balance of making sure that we have safe places for people to work and that we have, um, you know, that we're moving forward and we can see light at the end of the tunnel about actually getting back to work. So I can't say enough about our healthcare workers who are our heroes and inside of every single elected government, how everybody's been focused on one thing and it's been, let's do this for our district, let's do this for our state. We're gonna win an invisible war and we're gonna do it together with Hoosier Common Sense and you can see it every single day in this state. Let's move now to the vice president's visit that Congressman Baird mentioned a bit earlier. He was here in Kokomo visiting the GM plant. Now, the Indiana DNC says, despite the VP's remarks, quote, the Trump administration's chaotic, erratic response has failed us at every level. So starting first in the fourth district here, Congressman, has the Trump administration met the needs of Hoosiers and how? Yes, and I think it's inspiring to see that companies like GM and Logan Sport and these other companies that have come forward. And, and it's, it's amazing to me, and it's the American spirit, the same kind of spirit we saw back in World War II, the same kind of spirit that I see in my fellow veterans, uh, that spirit to meet the challenge and, and end up to win. And just as Representative Rosorski mentioned, we can win this, win this pandemic. Congresswoman, your thoughts on this. Has the Trump administration done enough? Absolutely. You know what? When there was a need and we called out, we had resources. And it's not to say that we're not fighting like everybody else we are, but I can tell you there is a, there's a benefit to be able to pick up the phone and call the vice president, the former governor of the state of Indiana, and have results. And I'll tell you, you know what? I, what, I think I am so inspired. Like Jim just said, I, I was at a company today in my district in northern Indiana making face shields. This is a manufacturing company that put themselves on hold making auto parts to make face shields. And now they're making masks, which will be producing 80,000 a day. So when you talk about Hoosiers with ingenuity and crisis breeding intervention and those kinds of things, that's what we're seeing in our district and our state. And I'll tell you what. We've risen to the to the uh, crisis. The president has absolutely risen to the crisis, and we are going to defeat this and celebrate at some point here on the other side. We're going to celebrate victory in this country like we haven't celebrated probably in my lifetime because we did this together. We did not have politics enter the mix of this, and we can be so proud of our fellow Hoosiers. They're the ones that hunkered down, stayed home, didn't go anywhere. They're the ones that lowered the curve, so we can all be proud of the victory that we're going to see in the state of Indiana. All right, I got a few seconds here left. I want to make sure that Congressman Banks gets to answer too. Do you agree with your colleagues up north? Absolutely. Pre President Trump is, has shown extraordinary leadership uh, through all of this. He's, he's criticized for literally everything that he does. He was criticized from the very beginning when he instituted the travel ban. He's criticized every day. But in, in spite of that, um, Hoosiers know that President Donald Trump has been a tremendous leader through some of the darkest times in American history. And I'm proud to stand with President Trump as we continue to get uh, our, our efforts underway to get America back to work. All right, well, we thank all of the representatives here for joining us. They'll be back in just a few minutes for a lightning round of questions. So stay tuned for that. All right, Bierschel, thank you so much. We do have more of your questions for our congressional representatives. That is still to come. Dan. Will Americans get a second stimulus check? And should all essential workers get hazard pay? We'll tackle those issues with some of our reps from Southern Indiana after the break.